Turning, looking, it is the rubber game between the Cincinnati Reds and the New York Yankees from the Bronx. Nasty Nestor Cortez Jr. on the bump and he faces off against the very dangerous Luis Castillo. My recap, your reactions coming up next. This is Yankees Game Night. loss can we for once have an umpire that isn't complete dog shit sorry to uh break my no cursing rule on here mom but come on these umpires are horrendous the last really couple of months <sighs> all right before we get started uh news on severino in case you missed it low grade lat strain that's probably at least a few starts that he's going to miss. Uh, it could have been worse. Could have been a rotator cuff. Could have been a labrum. I was worried about that. But you know, it sounds like he's coming back as long as he heals up. He's had some trouble coming back from injuries before. Also, in case you missed it, welcome back to the Yankees family to Tyler Wade. Oh, yes. I hate this. It is revolting. Uh, he was acquired before the game in a trade he's going to go to triple a and i hope he stays there interesting lineup tonight matt carpenter in right field for the first time in yankee stadium he made a really nice play banging up against the wall to reel one in but he also made kind of a bonehead play out there as well also took a bad route in the extra innings really good pitching matchup on paper nestor cortez versus luis castillo Castillo, in case you didn't know, is one of these guys that's been linked to the Yankees in trade rumors. I didn't put him in my top 10 trade candidates breakdown because at the time the rumors were that the Yankees weren't in on him. They were more in on uh, Frankie Montas, but I might have to do a video on Castillo because he was tremendous tonight. That was my first time watching him live, and I fell in love, quite frankly. Unorthodox arm motion, but, you know, 99 miles an hour of the easiest gas you'll ever see in your life except for when I go to Taco Bell. Let's get the Taco Bell noise. Uh, Taco Bell, by the way, not a sponsor tonight. Uh, both teams were scoreless through four innings. Top five. Reds loaded the bases, and there was a shallow fly ball to right field, and Carpenter came in and made the catch, but kind of, I guess, didn't know where to throw it. He kind of looked towards second base, ended up making the throw home, but it was way late. Run scored. Ended up being a sack fly. Uh, that's one thing for younger viewers out there who might still be playing baseball. A good rule of thumb is to think about where you're going to go with the ball before the pitch is even hit to you, before the pitch is thrown, really, and then just let it happen. You know, say, hey, if it's hit in front of me, I'm catching it, I'm going home with it. You got to be prepared there, and I think just he's not used to preparing in the outfield for the mental part of the game. Um, Nestor kind of had some ugly body language after that play, kind of showed up Carpenter a little bit. I didn't like that. Yankees didn't get their first hit until the bottom of the sixth. It was a double by Rizzo. Uh, they were doing like a, a charity thing for Rizzo's, um, I guess, charity tonight. And there was a lot of cool prizes, so it was cool for him to come through tonight. Uh, John Carlos Stanton got the Yankees' first run with a little pepper shot at the drawn-in second baseman. Run scored. Uh, really fantastic at bat from Marwin Gonzalez in the bottom of the seventh. 12-pitch walk. That took Castillo up to the... 108 pitch mark got him out of the game uh, after DJ LeMahieu uh, made the final out of that inning. Uh, if he had had a shorter at bat, he might have been able to give you one more inning. Really impressive performance by him. He does go – and look, I, I don't read the opposing pitcher's stats very often, but he goes seven innings, two hits, one run, four walks, eight strikeouts. Got to give credit where credit's due. The guy's the number one trade target for a reason. Nestor Cortez also did a great job tonight. Seven innings, four hits, one run, one walk, four strikeouts. But um, from there on out, things just got worse. Jonathan Lewise a good back in the game in the top of the eighth. 
And I think that lasagna just needed a little bit more time in the oven. Uh, he didn't really have it tonight, although, you know, he did have some bad luck. Uh, the first hitter was kind of a blue broken bat single. Next one was a double play ball that just kind of ticked off a DJ's glove. It was, you know, maybe two inches to the left, and it's a double play. But then he gave up a base hit to Joey Gallo. Or, sorry, Joey uh, Votto. Imagine that, Joey Gallo getting a base hit. Um, and then the next batter up also ripped a base hit to a wide open right field. Reds went up 4-1. The thing about concern, that concerns me about Lasagna is that he's not striking guys out. He's not missing bats. The stuff still looks there. I mean, I saw 99 a few times tonight. I saw a good changeup, good hook. But he's he's missing with his location or he's tipping his pitches because they're hitting him. He's not missing bats ever. Uh, Yankees did rally back. Bottom eight, Aaron Judge absolutely demolished a baseball over the uh, bullpen in right field. Best swing for him in probably a couple of weeks. 31st home run of the season, 431 feet. Four batters later, Glaber Torres, opposite field, two-run shot, 14th of the season. It's good when he's using right field. He's looked more confident lately. Look at this Judge home run again. Oh, my God. I love it when the recap catches up to my uh, – to my re to my highlights there, uh, man, that was just pummeled. And then the home run from Glaber Torres. That's a 95 mile an hour fastball, top of the zone. But Joey Gallo, sorry, I keep saying Joey Gallo, Joey Votto, who just killed the Yankees in the series. Um, he roped one off of car. He roped one by Carpenter in right field in the tenth to get the uh, Reds the lead. Reds got a couple more to go up. 7-4 in that inning. But the Yankees battled back once again. Carpenter goes deep to right field. This one to the back of the right field seats. Actually might have gotten up into that second row of the bleachers there. He just golfs it. He's got 11 home runs in under 70 at-bats with the Yankees. You know, uh, if the Yankees ever need a DH this season at any point, he should be in there every day as a DH. Uh, I, I was confident in his ability to play right field. Uh, after tonight, not so much. Definitely not in a big game. Uh, Yankees come up short. They lose this one 7-6, to six, and they lose the series to the Reds two games to one. Frankie Baseball says, Derek hates Joey Gallo so much he consumes him his every thought. I'm like Sideshow Bob and Bart Simpson. I even wore my Bart Simpson shirt for that for that very reason. No, I'm obsessed. I'm obsessed with how bad Joey Gallo is. But Joey Gallo didn't lose us this game. He actually had a couple of walks. He stole a base. Um, Dean Jones says, Boone destroyed the pen. Too much use. You know, the starters actually gave the Yankees a lot of innings early in the season. Uh, I mean, I don't feel like the pen was really that overused. I do feel like everybody is ready for a break. But, um, hey, look. It's... It is what it is. Yankees dropped a tough one. Let's go to the box score. This is just a disappointing night. Disappointing box score to look at. <laughs> Stone Cold says, Yay, Tyler Wade is back. Can you tell how excited I am? Appreciate that, Stone Cold. I am also not super excited. I don't think he's a game changer, but he does play a lot of positions. Uh, the Yankees definitely could use depth, so... You know, they're familiar with him. He fits in uh, good with the clubhouse. So it is what it is. Uh, LeMahieu 0 for 4 tonight. Couple of uh, walks. He lined out hard to end the game. Judge 1 for 4 with the big home run. Uh, two runs scored on the night. He's hitting 278. That average has really fallen. Uh, OPS still a very impressive 964, though. Rizzo 1 for 5. He picked up the Yankees' first hit of the night. Stanton takes the collar tonight. Again, if he doesn't hit a home run, he doesn't do anything lately. His batting average is down to 232. Still got the 819 OPS because he's got, you know, I think 23 home runs. But he's just not getting hits. And when the Yankees are really going, it's because him and Judge are both hitting. And right now, neither one of them is doing much other than the occasional bomb. Earl of Demise says, should have never brought in Loisaga. Horrible decision in a high leverage situation. Losing to the Reds is inexcusable. Also, the 7 8 9 hitters. Were, again, useless at the plate. Appreciate that. Uh, Earl of Demise. Um, you know, I don't blame uh, 
Booney for going to Loisaga because the, the pen, as Dean Jones said, is a little bit worn out. And so you really you couldn't go to Holmes, you couldn't go to King. I mean, these guys have been pitching a lot. Chapman, you pretty much were left in a situation that you don't want to be in, which is you know throwing a guy right back on the fire. You know, ideally you'd like to get him in there with a big lead or down, preferably not down, but with a big lead or down some runs, so that way he can just kind of work through his mechanics, not have a ton of pressure. Uh, but his ERA on the season is over eight now. Uh, as we finish up the box score here, uh, let's take a look at the pitching. Cortez goes seven good innings, and then Loiza got two thirds of an inning, four hits, two of them hit well, uh, and again, no strikeouts. He's not whiffing guys. That's the big concern for me. We'll take a look uh, once he accumulates more innings at his uh, whiff percentage as a pitcher. Uh, right now, the sample size is a little small because he's been injured, but I, I want to see what what he does with a little bit more of an opportunity. Albert Abreu uh, came in first pitch he threw. Drilled, I think it was Nick Senzel, right in the hacky sack. Uh, he ends up uh, throwing one in the third innings. No hits, no walks, two strikeouts. He got 2.28 ERA on the year, so Abreu was doing a nice job. And Licky was throwing just meatballs tonight. Look, I made prison pasta today. I talked about it yesterday on, the, uh, on Twitter. Goodfellas prison pasta with the meat and all that stuff. And I didn't have as many meatballs today as Lucas Licky did. Brady Bosett says, we won the series, LMAO. Hey, congratulations, but um, you're not going to be watching baseball in October. Uh, Veritas says, why is Boston scaring everyone when they just got swept? So Boston um, versus the Yankees, it's kind of like Carolina versus Duke. It's one of those things where you can throw the stats and the standings right out the window because it's um, – it's an emotional war. It's who wants it. It's a street fight. So, um, yeah, they, they do worry me. They do worry me. Especially when you just lost two out of three to the Reds. The Red Sox are clearly a better team than the Reds. Uh, but, you know, like you said, they're, they're struggling a bit. I, I am a little bit worried about that. But we do have a nice lead, as Dean Jones mentions, 13 up uh, in the division. So, look. We talked about this all year. We we didn't expect the Yankees to get off to the start that they get, that they started on. It was historic. You can throw all the records out the window now. This team's not winning 120 games. They're not winning 117 games. That's why I had them, you know, at about 105 wins. I figured there was going to be a slump like this at some point. No team goes unscathed throughout the entire season ever. It's just impossible. Baseball is not. It's not one of those sports like football where you can go undefeated. I mean, you're going to have bad nights. Your pitching is going to wear down. You're going to have injuries because it's such a long season. You're going to have just stretches of games where you have like a rain out, a double header, and then like 20 straight games scheduled. You get tired. You wear down. I think the Yankees are, one, badly in need of three or four days off of a break. I think, you know, but everybody is. So that's really no excuse. I do think that the pitching, I don't want to say that the bullpen has been overused, but they've definitely been exposed lately. And as far as the starting pitching goes, I feel like Tyone is done. I mean, he's cooked. I wouldn't pitch him again before the all-star break if, if it could be avoided, but I think he's pitching either tomorrow or the next day. Um, Garrett Cole's been good, not getting much run support lately. And uh, Cortez had a, you know, he's been a little bit up and down lately, but he had a good night tonight against a team that he should pitch well against. So I'm not going to eat Cortez's lunch. Severino obviously out. It'll be interesting to see what the Yankees do in the bullpen or in the uh, rotation uh, to replace him. I think it's going to be J.P. Sears. Oh man. Uh, Douglas Ross says the '98 team came close to uh, a team that went through the season undefeated. They actually began 60. And 21, I think, or 61 and 20. It was halfway through the season. They were 61. You and you figured they were going to let off the gas at some point, but they really never did until September. They did have a rough stretch in September where I think they lost. I want to say 11 out of 19 games. And um, then Shane Spencer started carrying them the last couple of weeks. Just got red hot. This year's Shane Spencer, Matt Carpenter, 
uh, has been on fire, and I think you just need to play him more. I mean, even on a night like tonight where you lose, he hits a home run. How many hits did he have tonight? Just one? Yeah, he was one for three uh, with a two-run home run and two runs scored. He's hitting three thirty eight with a 1.319 OPS. I mean, how do you not play the guy more? I'd have him in there every night. Ride or till Shibuksha or don't ride at all, in the words of Tin Cup. Uh, Sabre says the IL ruined Stanton this year. You know, you're not wrong. I don't want to say ruined because, you know, there's a lot of season left, and he's had incredible streaks before, both hot and cold. And I think a hot streak is coming. I'm kind of glad. i got to admit, I'm kind of glad he's not going to be in the home run derby. I don't want him coming out of the break tired and or nursing some kind of injury that he had in the All-Star break. I want him feeling strong. You know, and um, I didn't. I, I, as fun as it would have been, I'm glad he's going to skip it. I wish Judge would skip the All Star game. You know, because he's got that lower body soreness. You know, he's not feeling right. Even on that nice diving catch tonight, he had a grimace getting up. Uh, so, <laughs> Pamela says it's times like this I got to watch Always Sunny. So, Pamela, I am in season three of Always Sunny, and I, I think there's about 15 seasons, so I got my work out ahead of me, but somebody on this channel during the winter suggested it to me, and I've been watching it during my spare time, but I got a lot of shows that it's competing with right now. Better Call Saul is back, What We Do in the Shadows is back, and my wife's got me watching The Queen, which I know. I'm really into it. I love it. I think it's fantastic. I love this British shit. Uh, Frankie Baseball says... The 1998 Yankees started 1-4. I remember that. They actually started off 0-3. Uh, and it was one of those things where they had a lot of high expectations coming out of spring training. They go out to Anaheim. They began the season in Anaheim. And it was rainy and messy, and they just couldn't get in a groove. They go to Oakland. They struggled in Oakland. But then once they got to Seattle, they had a team meeting, a closed-door team meeting, and... Uh, the Mariners had thrown up and in to Paul O'Neill, and he was giving it to David Cohn, like, hey, why are our pitchers not protecting us? And the Yankees came out, I think it was game two or three of that series, and I think they scored five runs in the first inning. Chuck Knobloch led off the game with a home run. Daryl Strawberry went opposite field for a three-run home run. And then from there, it was off to the races. They had one of those back-and-forth games on opening day that year at Yankee Stadium, I think they won 17-13. to 13. Tino hit a big three-run home run. And from there, it was just like win streak, loss, win streak, loss. It was just like win streak after win streak. It was amazing. Uh, Brett Deutsch wants to know, Sears or Herman, Or maybe it's just saying Sears or Herman because I was pondering who would take the spot in the rotation. I think it's probably Sears. I, I, would, I would go with Herman in the bullpen. I think he translates better to the bullpen. And right now, it's pretty obvious that you need some bullpen arms. Let's see here. Uh, Veritas Invicta says, Carp really needs to take Gallo's place in the lineup, and I wholeheartedly agree. I wholeheartedly agree. Stone Cold says, when is the trade deadline? It is August 2nd this year. It used to be July 31st for many, many years. I think they scooted it back a couple of days this year, either as part of the collective bargaining agreement or, like, as a result of the lockout. Uh, so, anyway. All right, let's take a couple more here, and we're going to call it a night because this is a tough one to watch the highlights for <laughs> over and over again, let's be honest. Um, Eric C. says, Carpenter needs to play more and bring up Floreal and Andujar. You need to rest some of the regulars. Well, they're going to get the all-star break rest for sure. What's, it's interesting that, you know, Floreal has been a big-time Yankees prospect for years, and they've resisted moving him, and they have given him some chances. They've called him up. But now that he's finally doing really well at AAA, they're not giving him a shot. I, You know what? I, I, I love his defense. I think he runs really well. If he can hit at all, at all, I think you put him in there over Joey Gallo. And, you know, I don't mean to keep beating up on Joey Gallo, but after his 0 for 3 tonight, he's down to 164 with a 622 OPS. You know, he's got a lower... OPS than our light hitting defense first stop gap shortstop. Isaiah Conor Falefa has a 647 OPS after tonight. By the way, hitting 273, which is I think exactly what he hit last year with Texas. So uh, that was an interesting conversation I had with uh, Ryan Garcia yesterday about 
Isaiah Kiner Falefa because I go back and forth. Like, you know, I wanted them to pick up Kiner Falefa because I feel like his kind of scrappy player is something that they needed last year that they didn't have, you know, and, and he led, uh, oh, he would have led the Yankees in hits last year if he had played for the Yankees by like 20 hits. And I thought just having more hits in the lineup can't be a bad thing, right? But we definitely over overestimated his his defense. I, I watched the uh, John Boy clip today. It was a Talking Yanks clip of um, when it was after the trade where he and Joez McFly and Jake were watching uh, highlights of uh, Kiner Falafa because they, they hadn't really watched much of him. And they turned, they turned up the expected batting average filter because they said, let's see how he does on hard hit balls. And like the first one, he booted it <laughs> and like made a horrible play. And they were they couldn't stop laughing. And that was a funny moment, uh, but I really I really like him as a player, and I think he's going to improve. Uh, but let's talk about Joey Gallo because he's not he's not getting any better. I mean, we're almost to the trade deadline, so it's going to happen in the next couple of weeks. This nightmare is going to be over. Elt says you bitching about IKF, but he got a pinch hit. I'm not bitching about him. I'm saying he's good. I've been a defender of IKF, and I was an advocate of him coming here. If you watch that video, I defend. I'm on the side of I like IKF. I'm rooting for him. Uh, Vecna says this team cannot hit good pitching, and it will show in October. Well, most most teams don't hit very good pitching. Uh, I th- I think they've hit good pitching at times this year. But Castillo, I mean, he's 99 miles an hour with sink. And he's throwing strikes. What do you want us to do? What do you want us to do? All right, guys. We're going to call it a night. Uh, This was another tough one. And um, hopefully the Yankees will come back tomorrow and we'll have a, a better evening on a Friday night with the Red Sox in town. See you next time.